Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on mysterious and weird true stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Case File Number 265, written by Adversario Casuale, twisting Tuesday into Wednesday. This happened today, Tuesday where I live. First, I was chatting with my grandma and she asked me if I had taken any medication I should take on Wednesdays. I replied that it was indeed not Wednesday. She insisted that it was, and that she had also just taken her medicine that she also needed to take on Wednesday. I had to show her her pills package to prove it was in fact Tuesday. Alright, <laughs> whatever old grandma. Then I talked with my mom, and she was also convinced that today's Wednesday. I don't really remember how the topic popped up, something about her shifts at work. She instead said it was Wednesday, and wouldn't budge until I showed her the date on the phone. Weird, but okay. Then I'm going to the dentist. He's fixing my next appointment, and he asked me if I'm free to come in tomorrow. I agree, and I'm surprised that he's open on a Wednesday, since he's usually closed. He looks at me weird and says, No, tomorrow's Thursday. Then he realizes that, if it were, it would make today Wednesday, and he would be closed. He shakes his head and gives me my Thursday appointment. It feels like everyone is glitching, and they skipped a day, on the same day. Case file number 266, written by Coat Full of Owls. Time is unstable on Arizonian roads. To get from Phoenix, Arizona, to Tuscan, Arizona, it takes about two hours, and anyone who has taken this drive knows that there isn't much to talk about between either city. A few sparse towns, mainly built around trucker gas stations, but that's about it. I've taken this drive many times, and usually before or after the town of Sunland Jin, yep, that's the name, is where time seems to shift. There's honestly an odd feeling when you focus on it. And before I know it, I'm already coming into the outskirts of Tuscan or Phoenix, 30 minutes, sometimes 40 minutes early. My memory doesn't contain me going past the usual markers, the nut farm the big mountain, the ostrich farm, none of it. Arizona is an odd place in case you were wondering. The only feasible explanation I can come up with is some sort of portal, if you believe in such things. Where it's not like portals in all the video games or movies, where you can see it and things get all warped and trippy, but where it just happens. And I'm not the only one to have noticed it is a thing. People I've talked to, friends included, have also experienced it. You're driving, and one minute you'll see one sign, you blink, and then the next you're coming into town. Am I the only one that has witnessed this more than once on a certain drive, multiple times? Case file number 267, written by the Skullduggery. Mother, the imposter. My mom used to work during the day and leave me home alone when I was around 12 or 13 and too old for daycare. She would ring the home phone periodically throughout the day and make sure everything was alright. One day I'm home alone and the phone rings. I pick it up. It's mum. We have a short, succinct conversation that's basically, everything going alright? Yeah. Okay, don't answer the door if anyone knocks, etc, etc. Very normal conversation. It ends, I hang up, and go about my day. Not even 15 minutes later, the phone rings again. I pick it up and it's mom again. We exchange hellos and I jokingly say, it must be a slow day, you literally just rang me. And mom goes very quiet for a minute and then says, I haven't called you today. My blood went cold, and to this day I still don't know who called me. We came up with a secret password after that. Who was the imposter who sounded just like my mom? Or was this a delayed glitch? If you're enjoying this video, consider giving it a like. Now on to the next story. Bonus file, written by Altruistic Flight 226. When sheep start flying, it's time to run. About 10 years ago, I moved into a house. My husband worked nights, so it was just my four-year-old and me at home most nights. The second day we were there, my husband built our bed. I fell asleep alone and woke up in the middle of the night to my bed violently shaking. As I'm laying there, afraid to move, I noticed the handles on my dressers are flapping up and down. I was afraid for my daughter, who was in the next room, so I jumped out of my bed and ran to her room, but she was sound asleep. I was too afraid to sleep alone in my room, so I had my husband pull out a mattress into my daughter's room, so I could sleep there. 
In between that first incident and the last, several unexplainable things happened. Ceiling fans would rotate one way, then stop and rotate the other way. My dogs would start aggressively barking at a corner of the living room. Things would go missing and then show up in plain sight. We would smell weird smells like old lady perfume or a strong smell of popcorn where the kitchen would have been in the 1970s. I would hear footsteps in the attic. One night I heard a TV turn on in the spare bedroom. I go to check it out and the TV is turning off and on and then I saw a ball of light bouncing around the room. One night I had two friends over. We were sitting in the living room talking while my daughter played with a little people's farm animal set. She had a sheep in her hand and set it down in the middle of the table. As she's walking over to us, the sheep flies off the table and slams into the wall. I begged my friends not to leave as I was terrified to be alone. The night before, I decided I couldn't take it anymore. My husband was off to work and we had fallen asleep watching TV. He had woken me up around 2am and told me he was going to eat a bowl of cereal. I went upstairs to my daughter's room where I felt the safest and still had my mattress on the floor. As soon as I close my eyes, I hear what sounds like her TV crashing to the floor. She had a lamp in her room that had a floor button, so I turned on her light super fast. When I turned around, I saw her closet door flying open so hard it hit the wall. My daughter woke up and we were both screaming. I left the next day and couldn't even go back into the house to pack anything up. I even had to break my lease. I told my landlord what happened and it seemed like she already knew what was going on. She proceeded to tell me that any house can be haunted, new or old, and described how she couldn't even keep a babysitter in her newly built house. This house was not my first paranormal experience or my last, but it was definitely the scariest time of my life. Bonus file, written by Smiley B. Powerful fatherly orbs. When I was 13 months old, I lost my father to some suspicious circumstances. Possible murder. So unfortunately, I never got the luxury to have a strong relationship with him. However, I remember vividly his face, his laugh, and many memories of us playing together. Even stranger was that my memories are from the house my mother and I moved into after he passed in our old one. I remember playing games, tea parties, and even dressing up with him. But the oddest part was that the photos my mom took of me when I was playing with him, there would always be an orb next to me, the same color, shape, and size. My mom always thought it was a camera, but it was never in the same spot. Fast forward to when I was about 6 years old. I remember it was Christmas Eve, so I was excitedly waiting for Santa Claus to come. I just remember what felt like someone kissing me goodnight, and when I sat up excitedly to see who, whom I hope was Santa, instead I saw this extremely bright light coming from the hall. Now my mother was laying in bed next to me, fast asleep, and we had nobody else in the house but I just remember watching it in awe as it was a beautiful blue flash of light that seemed to open and then close. I remember writing it off as Santa leaving, so I excitedly woke up my mother to go open my presents. It was about 3am. Now obviously, as I got older and learned that Santa wasn't real, I questioned what I saw that night. It wasn't a car light, an electrical malfunction, or a TV that was accidentally turned on, and after mentioning it to my mother as an adult, I truly believed I watched him cross over. My reasoning? My mother told me in high school that she believed my dad's spirit was with me in the house. She said it was okay at first, but that she thinks he was playing tricks on her, like he did when he was alive. And hearing me talk to him all the time and seeing the orbs in all my photos began to freak her out. Well, it turned out that night, Christmas Eve, her best friend who had come for dinner had helped her cleanse the spirit away, and that after she did, I never mentioned my father or played with him again. My mother wrote off me seeing the bright light as my crazy childhood imagination, but as horrible as my memory is from my childhood, the feeling and image I got from that light that night has always felt so real and raw to me. I still remember the feeling of peace and happiness that washed over me when I saw it. And now, 17 years later, I believe wholeheartedly I watched my dad cross over. In my mind that settles it. I really did watch my dad cross over. Bonus file, written by Yam Special 7425 Big Ass Black Mass. This could be nothing paranormal, but yet I'm curious if it is. It started four years ago when I met my friend. I lived in an institution type thing, and she moved there and we got along quickly. 
She lived in one of the institution's apartments, and I lived in the main building. We always hung out at her place, and I always felt um, watched or not alone in her toilet. I would rush out for no reason. I know I'm silly, but it was weird. One day I was changing in the bathroom when suddenly I walked out to my friend. No particular reason for it. The feels of the room just got to me, I guess. Then I walk out there again. She has a cabinet with magnetic stuff in the cabin, so you'd have to really use force to open it. When I walked to the toilet, it was open and I knew it wasn't open a minute ago. I turn around to tell my friend and take her to the toilet. Then it's closed. This is my first ever experience and we tried to do everything we could to debunk this. Anyhow, ever since when I'm with her, small stuff happens. The water boiler would turn on by itself, somebody would turn off the vacuum when I use it, and so on. Now, I moved in with her several years later in another apartment in another city. When she's at work, I feel like I'm not alone, but I ignore it because I might be playing mind games on myself. But today, I saw something for the first time ever, and it caught me off guard. I was laying on my bed on the floor this morning. She was watching TV on the couch. Behind the couch is a door to the hallway, and to the right in that hallway, the entrance to the kitchen. I saw a big-ass black mass, no other word for it, filling about the entire top right corner of the doorway to the hallway. It moved, just as I saw it, towards the kitchen. I could not see through it, it was not a shadow, it was a black mass of something. I'm not scared personally, more fascinated. I don't know if this is even paranormal, but I don't know what it really is. Because it's not a shadow figure, you couldn't see through it. I figured some of y'all maybe could explain this further.